Worldwide, there are 24 million charismatics who belong to a group that can be called Oneness Pentecostal. When my father died, I, I had a real ex experience with Christ and a real conversion in Christ, and, and, and I had it in a Oneness Church. What is Oneness Pentecostalism? Sometimes you see it as Jesus only. It denies the Trinity. 24 million, they deny the Trinity. About one out of every four in America. I'm not crazy about the word persons, and this is, most people who know me know that that is really, my doctrinal statement is no different from yours except for the, the, the injection word of manifest instead of manifest instead of persons, which you describe as modalists and I describe as Pauline. What do they believe? They believe in what is called modalism, that there's one God and he appears in three different modes. Sometimes he's the Father, sometimes he's the Son, and sometimes he's the Spirit, but he's never all three at the same time. If you want to best understand the relationship between Christ and God, next time you have a glass of water, put some ice in it and figure out which one of them is H2O. You could look at the glass and say the ice is in the water. But if you look at it long enough, you'd have to say, but the water, if you don't like water, you don't like ice. And if you don't understand that, then put it on the stove and boil it. And when it turns to steam, how can one element be three things at the same time and still be one? It happens in your kitchen Councils of Nicaea, 325, Constantinople, 381, modalism was universally condemned as heresy. T.D. Jakes is one of the most popular pastors in the United States, but there is an enormous number of problems with Jakes' ministry. Let's take a look at eight of these problems. Make sure you stick around to hear the last one. We already saw from the introductory clips that Jakes has never officially renounced his heretical, modalist view of the Trinity. First, let's talk about Jakes' relationship with Oprah. Oprah has said that Jakes is her favorite pastor and has invited Jakes onto her show numerous times. When you hold on to your history, you do it at the expense of your destiny. Oh my God! <laughs> It's a pump moment right here. <laughs> Going on Oprah's show isn't a bad thing in itself, but Jakes has also said some extremely concerning things while on Oprah's show. Listen to what Jakes says here about sea turtles, human nature, and human potential. The sea turtles are born on land. The first thing they do is turn to the water because instinctively they know that they were created to be in the water. What do you do instinctively? What, what is your sweet spot? And when you flow in it, it is natural to you. And listen to what Jakes says about apple apples and human nature here. I've got these apples here because I want you to understand about this apple that now imagine the apple is you and you're trying to get your orchard out. When you touch the core and you get down to the seed, you have then gotten to the place where you can find its fullest and best potential. This is a self-help message that is completely antithetical to what the Bible teaches about human nature and what truly lies at our core. And we're by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. In Enemies of God, children of wrath, who love the darkness and hate the light, and therefore all we can do is continue go to war. And now watch Jakes tell Oprah that God chose her instead of recognizing the obvious fact that Oprah still needs to accept the true gospel of Jesus Christ and be saved. I have a very special gift that I want to give to this little girl. You gonna try to break me down right now? <laughs> seriously, seriously. It's from my heart. He chose her, called her. He made her a promise to protect her under the pinions of his mighty wings. Second, it's not just Oprah who demonstrates that Jake's version of the gospel is fundamentally flawed. Listen to Jake's defend the idea that Barack Obama is a genuine Christian, even though Obama supports and promotes many ideas that directly contradict what scripture clearly teaches. Reverend Franklin Graham has made some comments on several occasions as recently as three weeks ago, uh, really questioning the faith, if you will, of the president. I find it insulting. We didn't question the Christianity of President Bush when he said he accepted Christ. And I, I, I'm disappointed in uh, Reverend Franklin Graham in that regard. I wish he had the diplomacy of his father who brought the gospel to people without being nuanced by politics. And because when you do those things, you offend people that you're actually called to save and to serve. And uh, I, I, I would hope that he would see uh, the rationale uh, in, in apologizing for such 
statements because if uh, the president's faith is suspect, then all of our faith are suspect because the Bible is quite clear about what it takes to be saved. And the president has been quite open about his accepting Christ and him openly confessing it before men. And if it's good enough for the Bible, it ought to be good enough for the rest of us. But take a look at Obama's clash with the president of Kenya over an issue that the Bible is extremely clear about. If somebody is a law-abiding citizen who is going about their business and working in a job and obeying the traffic signs and doing all the other things that good citizens are supposed to do and not harming anybody, the idea that they are going to be treated differently or abused because of who they love is wrong. Full stop. Just like President Obama, I think we also need to be able to speak frankly about some of these things. And the fact of the matter is that Kenya, the United States, we share so many values. Our common love for democracy, entrepreneurship, value for families. These are things that we share. But there are some things that we must admit we don't share. Our culture, our societies don't accept. It's very difficult for us to be able to impose on people that which they themselves do not accept. Similarly, Jakes essentially does the exact same thing with P. Diddy, a rapper who is obviously not a true Christian. Here is Jakes not only treating P. Diddy as if he were a Christian, but also singling him out and praising him in front of the entire congregation. conversation between Jakes and Steve Harvey, where Harvey assumes that he is right with God. I expect, though, mm -hmm. that it, that God got something really great in store for me. So, you know, when, when doors... Let, let, let me jump in there. Come on. You're not supposed to know. Mm. You're not supposed <laughs> to know. Life is a mystery. If you take away the mystery and everything was certain, you wouldn't need faith. Mm. Jakes does not speak to Harvey as someone who needs to repent and submit to what the Bible clearly teaches, since Harvey rejects the idea that Jesus is the only way to God. There's no one, one way to heaven, no one way to paradise. It's like television. Now it's over 800 channels of cable and they're all pretty entertaining. So I'm pretty sure, man, that to get to heaven, there's got to be more than one route. Because somebody watching another channel or taking another channel than you, they still getting entertained and they probably still getting to heaven. It's very disturbing that there seems to be pretty much no distinction between Jake's and non-Christians within the world. Here's a video that Jake's put on his YouTube channel of a conversation with Charlemagne the God, who stands firmly against much of what scripture clearly teaches. In the absence of truth, everything has become ambiguous. Uh, it's, 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 and, and with that comes an attitude of hostility. So you don't want to be so creative that you become destructive rather than disruptive. Ooh, see. So how do you know when that shock is protecting you from, you know, hurting yourself? In an interview with Christian sports analyst Chris Broussard, Chris defended what the Bible clearly really teaches against Charlemagne, who pushed back against and challenged what Chris was saying. But now the New Testament, Romans and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and a few other scriptures clearly condemn uh, homosexuality, along with all forms of sexual immorality. So what about those that say, okay, uh, I was born gay, so how can you say that I'm a born sinner? Like, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking to be sinful. I, I'm, I'm born this way. This is naturally who I am. Clearly, Jakes does not understand the Bible's clear teachings about what it means to be regenerated and born again. And it is extremely concerning that Jakes treats so many celebrities who are clearly not Christian as if they are Christian and do not need to accept the gospel to be saved. My dear friend, there is no such thing as a carnal Christian. You say, now wait a minute, Brother Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, are ye not carnal? Paul said that. No, that's what Paul said. You need to read the whole book to find out what he meant. You see, one of our problems, youth, listen to me, most of our Christianity is based on cliches that we read on the back of Christian t-shirts. Most of our Christianity comes from songwriters and not the Bible. Most of what we believe to be true is dictated to us by our culture and not by the Bible. The Bible never teaches that a person can be a genuine Christian and live in continuous carnality and wickedness and sin all the days of their life. But the Bible teaches that the genuine Christian has been given a new nature. The genuine Christian has a father who loves them and disciplines them and watches over them and cares for them. Third, Jakes is a pretty radical charismatic who teaches and performs things that are very unbiblical and concerning. <laughs> Nobody got 
got you. Nobody got you. Nobody got you. They got your gift, but they never got you. They never got you. And God is touching you. Here's Jake's pretending that speaking gibberish equates to having the gift of tongues. <laughs> Tongues were known languages. We've made this point repeatedly. Tongues were not unintelligible gibberish. It was known languages. And watch this unbiblical ritual that Jakes does with his daughter, Sarah Jakes Roberts, where he lays hands on her and she falls down. As Samuel's horn of oil anointed David, I so anoint you. And with every drop of oil that falls upon your head, may the strength and the power of the Almighty God rest upon you. Rest upon your life. Rest upon your life. Upon your life. Of course, there is absolutely no biblical support for doing something like this. This is all for performance and to impress the audience. And now, watch as Sarah just stands up after a little bit. It overshadows you. It overshadows you. It overshadows you. Charismatics like Jake's are more interested in performing for and impressing the audience rather than submitting to what scripture actually teaches. This next clip is just really weird. Watch Jake's scream during the service as if this was a biblical and spiritual thing to do. Fourth, Jakes supports and promotes women pastors, which is clearly forbidden by scripture. Jakes is perfectly happy for his daughter Sarah Jakes Roberts to be pastor of a church. And the mission, the mission requires that I come out of this trance. Out of bullshit, da -da 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 -messy, the, the mission requires that I come out of this trance. Not only is Sarah preaching to men, she is also throwing in gibberish tongues, just like her father, to impress the audience and congregation. Why, why women are not allowed to, to preach in the church? First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12, I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, rather she is to remain quiet. So, because the Bible says so, um, and that's it. Fifth, Jakes partners with other Christian teachers who are also wolves who should also be avoided by Christian. Jakes is very good friends with Joel Osteen who teaches the prosperity gospel and a self-help version of Christianity that is lacking numerous fundamental Christian teachings. I'm so excited today to welcome one of my favorite people in all the world. Not only a phenomenal minister, entrepreneur, author, movie maker, but a great friend of mine. That's the one and only Bishop T.D. Jakes. We love you here at Lakewood. We're just speaking blessings over you. Jakes is also good friends with Stephen Furtick, whose teachings, just like Joel Osteen, are extremely man-centered and do not include any mention of sin, hell, or God's wrath. Come on, give it up for this red jacket. In living color. <laughs> I love you back. Excited to hear you talk for the next seven hours. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> the process of discipleship is not God changing you into something else. It's him revealing who you've been all along. And Jakes is more than happy to invite other Christian teachers who teach heresies, such as Joyce Meyer and Creflo Dollar, to his MegaFest event. You know, it's like the people who don't fall out in the spirit till they see if there's a catcher behind them. Don't, don't you love that? They're going, are you back there? Hallelujah. Sixth, listen to Jake's compromise concerning what scripture clearly teaches when interviewers bring up controversial subjects. Here is Jake's essentially dodging and equivocating during an interview with Mark Lamont Hill from the Huffington Post. And uh, trust me, I've talked to enough LGBT, they are not all the same. Oh, for sure. They're all Anyone many, and all Christians No, no. Uh, but how do we, first of all, has your thinking evolved on this? E evolved and evolving. Mm -hmm. Evolved and evolving. And here's Jake's being extremely vague and unclear to Oprah about whether non-Christians can be saved. First. Watch Jake start by saying something completely unrelated to Oprah's question. Are there many paths or different paths to God? <laughs> great question. Let me answer that uh, this way. First, I believe one of the great lessons I think that we have today is to live in a country that allows us to have various religious notions. Then, I think Jake's basically gives the correct answer, but he gives so many qualifications and sounds so apologetic that it's kind of hard to tell exactly. Are all the religions leading to that path or is only Christianity 
leading to that path. Well, I think you can get in Christianity and miss that path if you're not careful. Seventh, Jakes is one of the worst promoters of the prosperity gospel in the entire world. The blessing isn't in what you lost. The blessing is in what you got left. And if you will sow what you got left, God said, I'll give you back whatever it was. There's no way you can serve me and me not serve you. The more you give to me, the more I give back to you. I started giving on that level so that God would owe me. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? You can't handle that. I started giving on the level where I put God in debt and God said, I'll owe no man. I started giving on the money that I wanted to make. I started giving on a deal that hadn't closed yet and that God had to open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing because he wasn't going to be in debt to me. Here's what Vody Bauckham has said about TV Jakes and the heresies Jakes promotes. The Christian Post summarizes a blog post that Vody wrote about Jakes. It it says, Balcom also noted that the word of faith gospel that he believes Jakes preaches is heterodox and harmful. The Southern Baptist minister also claimed that Jakes' influence in the Dallas Metroplex has been negative at best, and that the Powder's House Bishop is an example of the worst the black church has to offer. He has brought a charismatic, theatrical, excessive word of faith flavor to the city that permeates many churches, especially black churches. Balcom elaborated, saying that he has seen firsthand the influence Jakes has had on Texas communities. Even if Jakes had come out with a statement on the doctrine of the Trinity, it would not have done anything to change the fact that he preaches another gospel. Having studied the Word of Faith movement and seen the devastation it leaves in its wake, I was disinclined to stand shoulder to shoulder with the man who has been this country's most popular purveyor of this heresy in the past two decades, the pastor continued. In another flagrant display of the prosperity gospel and a strange charismatic performance, watch what Tyler Perry does at Jake's church in this clip. In the service and I leaned up toward him and I said, I've just been touched to give a million dollars. So as so when you got up here and you said a million dollars, I said, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I know I heard your voice. I pray the power of God all over you. I pray his favor. I pray the blood of Jesus will come upon you right now. Keep you in his hand. God, I thank you for your blessing. Jakes' ministry is extremely focused upon both giving lots of money and getting people emotionally excited through unbiblical performances like these. Eighth, listen to Jakes try to warn people not to criticize him. When God anoints a person, no matter what they do, be careful about putting your mouth on them. Jakes assumes that God has specially anointed him, but of course, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, he's anointing people. We hear a lot about different anointings. Uh, could you please define for us, biblically, what is the correct understanding to be anointed, and can we be today, and if so, how? Do you want to say something, Justin? Sure. Well, Scripture teaches that if you are a Christian, you're anointed. If you have been regenerated by God's Holy Spirit, you are anointing. Uh, you are anointed. It is not a, it's not a feeling. It's not a buzz. It's not an experience. It's a reality. Jakes continues. So all of these bathroom prophets who got you pulled off at a corner and these parking lot soothsayers who say they got a word that's aimed at God's anointed, you are unbiblical, unscriptural, and unholy. Christians, let's not be deceived by T.D. Jakes' eloquence, charisma, or popularity in the culture. False teachers have the appearance of having some nourishment, the appearance of having sus some sustenance, but nothing ever falls from them. It leaves the ground below them dry and parched. Jakes teaches heresy and a false gospel that does not save, and as Christians we must fight against Jakes' immense influence by proclaiming the true gospel of Jesus Christ that is found within scripture. You see, Earth's problem is how can God judge? Heaven's problem is altogether different. How can God save, pardon wicked men, and still maintain his righteousness? And the answer is in the gospel, where God becomes a man and goes to a tree and bears the sin of his people. And with that sin, the curse. And with that curse, all the holy hatred, all the righteous judgment of God is poured down upon the head of God's Son, and he absorbs it. He satisfies justice, so it no longer has a demand against God's people, and God can be just and the justifier of wicked men. Never put anything above the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hello there. 
My name is Mike. I'm a deacon, a husband, a father, a software engineer, and an amateur maker of videos. The purpose of this channel is to communicate biblical truth in a variety of ways. I highlight solid teachers, call out problematic teachers, comment on cultural issues, create short form content, and more. I'm constantly trying to innovate and think of new video ideas. If you want to support this channel and what I'm doing, I would be so grateful if you would click subscribe and watch the videos I make until the end, which will help you to promote more biblical truth to more people. I also have a Patreon page if you want to help fund the creation of more videos faster. I hope you are having a great day. I will see you in the next video, and remember, this world is not our home.